On the show today, Liberty unveils a portion of its much anticipated FBS schedule. Plus, we introduce you to the twins that led LU softball to an historic season. Then I'll sit down with the man behind the Liberty cheer team and we bring you the top 10 plays from the entire sports season. That's all ahead on this edition of Game On. What is up? Welcome to Game On. Thank you so much for tuning in. Your week is about to get a whole lot better. You can thank us later. Yeah, for sure. We're going to have a lot of fun today. It's just what we do. As always, I'm Rhett. He's Matt. And we have a lot of great stories to get to, beginning with some news from the gridiron. Yeah, that's right. So what's the big deal about 2019? Well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. 2019 will be the first year that Liberty Football is a full-fledged member of the Football Bowl subdivision. It's also the first year they'll be bowl eligible. As we're finding out, they're putting together an impressive schedule for the first season as an FBS program. Now, we're learning more and more about that 2019 schedule every day. This is a partial schedule that we have now. The Flames will start the season at home against Syracuse. So an ACC opponent right out of the gate. Other home games include Buffalo, New Mexico, New Mexico State. And how about these road contests at Rutgers, wow. at BYU, at Virginia. Not easy. Not easy at all with road games against New Mexico State and UMass thrown in there as well. An impressive slate of games and an exciting time as Liberty makes the jump to college football's highest level. Well, turning our attention to baseball, we mentioned on last week's show that the Flames fell to Gardner-Webb. Now they would face the challenge of being perfect throughout the rest of the Big South tournament. The Flames taking on six-seeded UNC Asheville. Jack DeGroat was stellar in this game. He would go six innings, striking out a career-high 13 in the process, and would not allow a batter past second base. In the fifth, DJ Artis on third. Jake Barbie, just call Mr. Underrated, drives an artist to get the Flames on the board. Top of the ninth, Flames still up, 1-0. Asheville with a man on, and Brandon Langford had no doubt on this one. A two-run shot to left, giving the Bulldogs a 2-1 lead. Bottom of the ninth, the Flames will get a man on third, but Eric Whitecavage was able to keep Liberty at bay, and in the process, eliminates the Flames. Here's what Coach Jackson had to say about their season ending. Just a frustrating couple of days for us. Um, you know, when, when your backs are against the wall, you know, Jack DeGroat was unbelievable, and, and so was Shane. You know, just one pitch there. Um, to a guy that's a pretty good hitter. So um, just uh, it hurts, man. It hurts for these seniors and these guys that have given so much to this program. The term freshman phenom is thrown around a lot, but how many freshmen truly change a program? How many are game changers as soon as they step on campus? Well, Liberty softball had not one, but two freshman phenoms this season. Twin sisters Amber and Autumn Bishop helped lead the Flames to an unprecedented year and will likely have opponents seeing double for years to come. I was hired to help bring Liberty Softball to the next level, uh, to be competitive nationally. And so I needed to go out nationally to find some great players. I knew right away that the, these are two girls that have a passion for the game that I call old school, meaning that passion drives them to work hard. And it's not about accolades. It's about using the gifts God's given them to make a difference at the highest level. From the sunny beaches of California to the foothills of Virginia, freshman twins Amber and Autumn Bishop traveled 2,500 miles to play ball for the Lady Flames. And they didn't waste any time making their presence known. And she turns on this one, and it is gone. Two run shot. Good job at the plate there, and her hitting streak goes to nine. But it was no surprise to head coach Dot Richardson. For her, it was love at first sight. I went to see Riley Reynolds compete in what's called a friendly tournament. Well, as I started walking up to the fields, a lot of the coaches recognized me. Been around the sport a little while, and they were like, hey, Dot, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm the head softball coach at Liberty University, the largest Christian university in the world. And they're like, really? What are you looking for? A shortstop. I've got the shortstop for you. And her twin, is really good too. As I'm watching, I look and I go, no, the shortstop's really not what I'm looking for. And, but I wonder who her twin is I'm looking out there. And all of a sudden, the third baseman gets a ball and fires it to first. I said, I love that third baseman. And all of a sudden, the outfielder, the left fielder, 
She gets this amazing jump on a ball, fields this ball, fires another one to second base, holds the runner. She gets up, gets a triple. I said, I love that left fielder. So it's time for me to go. And as I'm leaving, I, the coach is like, well, you know, Doc, great to see you again. And, and uh, anything you need? And I said, yeah, I got a question. I said, uh, who's the twin of the shortstop? And she goes, no, that's not one of the twins. I didn't play her at short this game. The twins are the third baseman and the left fielder. I said, I want them. I want them. And if they want Liberty, here's my card, have them call. And they called. The rest, as they say, is history. Amber Bishop would set individual as well as freshman records for RBIs, home runs, runs scored, and hits. And despite being injured for part of the season, Autumn would follow close behind, joining Amber as an all Big South first teamer, as well as first team all freshman selection. Head coach Dot Richardson attributes it all to their intense passion for their game and their God. If you don't love what you're doing, there's no passion in it, you know? And I think that's just ultimately what it is. I think God gave us the gift to play softball, and I think He gave us the passion that we have for this sport. If you don't really love what you're doing, like, then why do it? The passion that Autumn and Amber have is a passion with a desire to be the best they can be. And for those two, it's also to become the best in the history of the game. And not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody has that heart. And as a coach, how do you see it? It's evident, even to their teammates, because they're in there in the batting cages all the time on their own. They're out there front tossing to each other on the field or hitting each other ground balls or fly balls. I mean, that is what I'm talking about. Everyone could have an enjoyment of the sport, you know, love to play it, but there's a difference, a difference in having a passion and a burning desire to see how great you can be, to challenge yourself and knowing that it takes hard work, dedication, desire, and a burning, um, feeling that there's nothing that's going to get in my way, not emotions, not relationships, not exams, not anything, because when I get on the field, nothing else exists but playing this sport. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Doc Richardson getting us fired up. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the stats for the Bishop Twins. Autumn would lead her sister in batting average as she was tied with Tori Zavodny for the top mark on the team. Amber far and away won the siblings' home run competition with 15, although Autumn got the nod as far as doubles were concerned with 15. The final RBI count wouldn't be close, but Amber not just led the Flames, she led the entire conference. And keep in mind, Autumn played 18 fewer games than Amber because of injury. I think it's crazy how you have two freshmen that come in to Liberty, yeah. and as soon as they step on the field, they take your program from here to here, and they take your lineup from here to here and give everybody else confidence like we said and before. And it was obvious, and also what's obvious is Dot Richardson can recruit at a really high oh, level. Yeah. We kind of knew that or had an idea about that coming in. In the short amount of time she's been here, you see the quality players she's gotten and the players that were already here that she's helped boost to another level. Yeah, it's absolutely been fantastic. Well, some big news coming out of Liberty Men's Tennis. Athletic Director Ian McCaw announced that Derek Schwant will be the sixth head coach of the program. Coach Schwann has spent time building successful programs at Virginia, Fresno State, and most recently, Georgia Tech. During his past three seasons at Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets have advanced to the NCAA Men's Team Championship and made second round appearances in 2016 and 2017. Definitely some exciting times for Liberty Men's Tennis. Yeah, and an exciting time for Liberty runner Azaria Kerwa. The sophomore from Kenya has earned a spot in the NCAA Track and Field Championships after qualifying in the Men's 5K. Last weekend at the NCAA East Preliminary Round Meet, Kerwa saved his best performance for last. After narrowly missing out on the qualifying in the 10K, he turned in a clutch performance in the 5K, which was the final event of the entire meet. He'll now be the Flames' lone representative in Eugene next weekend. Now let's send it on over to Bobby. All right, Matt. Well, before we officially can put a close on this year's baseball season, we caught up with one senior that had an absolute standout senior campaign. First baseman Sammy Termina will be surely missed next season, but before we could let him go, we first had to put him on the hot seat on Flames Fill in the Blank. Sammy, how did you start playing baseball? Uh, I can't even remember. I do remember the first when I really started to enjoy baseball was when the game Backyard Baseball came out. Favorite character was Pablo Sanchez. 
and I wanted to be just like him. Did I you? even named my dog Pablo. Tried to hit like him, got a backwards Boston hat like him. And you're a left-handed hitter. I'm left-handed, yes. You've always been left-handed hitter, I'm guessing. I've always been left-handed, yeah. My dad said that uh, everyone was right-handed hitting growing up, and I was just being stubborn and didn't want to be like everybody else, so I just always hit left-handed. If you could pick the best World Series matchup, who would it be between? I want to see a Cubs-Indians rematch again. Not Cubs-Minnesota Twins? No, I'm not a big Twins Not a big guy. Minnesota Twins no, fan? I'm not a fan of Come it. Come on. the great white north. Who's the best dressed? Andrew Yasek. All right, who's the worst? Xander Klaus. Xander Klaus. Yeah, well, he, what are some, some ultimate he, uh, he has a thing with these <laughs> red Nike sandals he wears everywhere. Really? Yeah, I hope you go into class wearing like warm-ups, a cut-off t-shirt, and red flip-flops. What about the guy who just cannot stop talking? This you will not hear. Jonathan Embry. Really? Yeah, he bounces off the walls. Does he? Yeah, he just he's he's just always has that comment for every little thing. And even when he's not around, he's somewhat somehow <laughs> always around. Who is the best dancer? Eric Grabowski's up there. Yeah, he has the best dance moves, the best magic tricks, uh, the best jokes. Yeah, Vinny, my guy Vinny Taylor. All right. All right, and best stadium you've ever watched a major league game at. Best stadium I've ever seen one in. I got to see uh, the Giants play the Rangers in the World Series in 2011, I think, with my uncle. And that was awesome. Around right the bay, it was great weather. We saw the go-ahead home run in the eighth inning, I think. Whole city shut down. It was, it was unbelievable, yeah. That wow. was great. Thanks again to Sammy for sitting down with us. We wish him, as well as all the seniors, the best of luck in the future. Thank you, Bobby. Well, coming up, the newest class of Liberty Athletics Hall of Famers is announced. Plus, Rhett sits down with the leader of the Flames cheer team, and we unveil the top 10 plays of the year. That's when Game On returns. Here I'm on my way, heading out across the bay. You know, conventional advertising says we should start with an arbitrary quote from a historic figure. It should make us sound nostalgic and wise. Horizon showing where I long to be. Outward bound, I travel on through rain or shine. Now we're supposed to cut to some slow motion footage of beautiful students to complete the package. Are you ready to apply now? Wait, scrap that. Listen, we're all tired of forced authenticity, and we don't want to waste your time with contrived quotes and stock footage. Let's try something different. You see, we believe in the challenge of a valuable education, the kind that keeps you well into the night as you search for the stars, the kind that prepares you for your dream job of changing the world. We love our beautiful campus where diversity can be seen in the color of our skin and the service we engage in. We paint up, rise up, and stand up for truth. On fourth and one, oh, you better believe we're going for it because there's a fire in our hearts a fire that burns for a better world. Like those who came before us, we're ready to roll up our sleeves and dig in. We have faith, hope, and love. So we become good fathers and mothers, co-workers and civil leaders, innovators, trailblazers, those who spark a revolution. We believe in training students how to remain true to their faith when the going gets tough when those around you seem to rise against you. So if you're still watching, thank you. Let's build a better world for Christ. Liberty University, training champions for Christ since 1971. I think online learning is a little bit different than in the classroom. The actual online portion gave me an opportunity to be able to be the husband and the, and the father and then get online and be the student in the evenings. Liberty Online has a partnership with Centra Health, the student uh, tuition deferment program that allows a student to enroll and pay their tuition out in payments or pay it one lump sum down the road. The degree that I have now that I obtained from Liberty in 2015 online is something that was a prerequisite for this role. So I don't believe I would have this role as it was a minimum to have a bachelor's degree for the role that I'm currently in. So it's helped a lot. We're all so busy in our today life. I think the online option provides an avenue to success and it provides an avenue to, you know, being able to have uh, the opportunity to go back to school with its flexibility and its schedule.
there. Welcome back to Game On. The Liberty Flames announced that five new members will be added to the Hall of Fame. This year's class will be inducted during a ceremony later in the fall. Well, Sam Chalanga is Liberty's most successful student at the D1 level. He won four individual national championships during his time with the Flames cross-country track and field program. Julius Nwosu did not start playing basketball until the year before he played at Liberty. However, he would finish his career as one of the premier centers during his time with the Flames. Kate Phillips Bigham was a driving force behind the Flames as they reinstated their softball program. She would become the team's first ever 20 game winner. Richard Shelton still holds a school record for career punt return yardage with 563 yards. Richard would also be drafted in the 10th round by the Broncos. And last, Dave Williams will enter the hall. He is considered one of the top strength and conditioning coaches in the country. He helped Liberty student athletes for over 30 years before his retirement this past spring. Well, time now for a segment on the show we call Game on Talks. It's where we sit down and get to know more about the leaders behind Liberty Athletics. And this week, Rhett had the chance to sit down with the man who's leading the cheers for the Flames. Today, we sit down with one of the few men who know Sparky's real identity, cheerleading head coach, Jordan Ballard. Jordan, man, thanks for taking the time to stop by. Absolutely. I look at you, you're a big guy, mm -hmm. physically just fit. How did you get into cheerleading and not like something like football? Uh, well, growing up in the Midwest, played a lot of sports, uh, you know, soccer, baseball, uh, played some hockey, tennis, played a little bit of football, basketball, so kind of had the full gamut of sports. I got into college, uh, didn't have any intention of playing sports or anything like that. My second year at Liberty, a couple guys in my hall were cheerleaders, so they were back early for uh, practices. I was back early for dorm leadership, and they said, hey, we're looking for a couple guys, you know, you got some broad shoulders, why don't you come out to a practice? And it was a 5.30 a.m. conditioning, and you think who would go to that. But I was young, and I thought at the time, this would be fun to tell the kids one day that I was a cheerleader. And the next day, they had their cheer practice where they were doing a lot of the athletic activity. And that part was pretty fun, and I found it challenging. So I thought, you know, this, is, this would be something fun to do. And so I got into it uh, when I was a student at Liberty here in my second year. As a coach, I guess that's something that I never thought about is how do you instruct your athletes to, hey, be involved with the crowd and interact with them? That's a huge part of what we do. Uh, game day is first for us, being a D1 school. So game day is you know, our first priority. And the cheerleaders, um, they're spirit raisers. So they're supposed to raise the spirits no matter what's going on on the field or the court, you know, what, no matter what the score is. They're supposed to be there to kind of be the 12th man on the football field or the extra person on the court to help the, the uh, football team or the other teams we cheer for. So we're supposed to just get them super pumped up to hit the field and to you know, play their absolute best though. The traditions, the fight song, all the craziness that goes on at the LU football games, uh, to be a part of that and to kind of help direct that into uh, a great experience for the fans is a big part of what we do for game day. Now, your wife was a cheerleader too, right? Did you meet her through cheerleading? That is correct. She was a uh, three-year member of the Liberty cheerleading team and she was a captain of the team when I first joined. So she was paired up with the best partner stunner and I kind of had her on this pedestal like, oh wow. You know, not only is she incredibly beautiful yeah. and godly and athletic and intelligent and spiritual and all these things, but she was also a captain. So uh, that was the person I've been praying for uh, my whole life. And so that was a, a special time. She was dating somebody else at the time, so <laughs> God had to work that out. And the more I got to know her, the more I fell in love with her. And then um, we got married in 2004, so we graduated that same year and we got married in the fall. So God has definitely blessed me over and above through cheerleading. That's awesome, man. You're a dad, you're a coach and a husband, mm -hmm. but you're also doing your doctorate in theology and apologetics. How do you find the time and what's the end goal of that? Uh, well, how do I find the time uh, <laughs> is very tricky. It's usually early mornings or late nights okay. because we practice and we have office hours and meetings, things like that during the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in the evenings is when I spend time with the kids. Once they go to bed, you know, it's when I uh, start burning the midnight oil to hit the books and to write the papers and, and things like that. So the end goal there is to be able to teach or to write or speak or things like that. Um, before I came back to Liberty to coach, uh, I had completed a number of master's degrees and just had an interest in apologetics to defend the faith, to help Christians to believe the scriptures and to answer the critics and, you know, some of the tough questions that come up in life. But um, 
the end goal, you know, possibly be here to teach at Liberty or to teach somewhere else. Um, also to speak, you know, at, at apologetic type conferences or, you know, to do debates and things like that. I've done some of that in the past with atheists and unbelievers to give a defense for the faith. And so that's definitely an interest of mine. That's why one reason why I came back to Liberty obviously was to coach, but also to work on the doctorate degree at the School of Divinity. Well, Jordan, great talking to you. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you. Our thanks to Coach Ballard for sitting down with us. Uh, an interesting guy, a lot of uh, different interests from him yeah, beyond for sure. just the sports side of things. All right, time now for Warm Hot and Fuego, a special edition. Yes. This one's for the ladies. The top <laughs> female athletes of the year. Right, of the warm, whole year. Whole year, Warm Hot and Fuego style. Kick it off with Warm. Warm, Holly Van Nord. I'm going to miss saying this young lady's name just because she was so excellent yeah. during her campaign. 41 shutouts during this past season. Her goals against average was .85. And really she, see it. I know, you can. It's so small. And she carried a .866 save percentage. I think her nickname should have been The Difference. The Difference? Just a little difference. late now. I know, but so, you know, we could just call her yeah. up if we ever do another yeah. story on her. That right there, that yeah. save was just The Difference, obviously, and, yeah. and winning a big South Championship. She was just phenomenal for this group. So many nights, yeah. if they perhaps got off to a slow start, or this last year they had a really young team, she was The Difference in the fact yeah. that She'd give them a chance, and later on, if they caught their legs, they'd be off to the races. Yeah, great career yeah, by her. All right, sure. from warm now to hot. Hot. Key and green, this freshman. we got two freshmen here. From the senior here. now to the youngsters. Yeah, to the youngsters. And I, I was kind of coming up with nicknames, and I thought hers should just be hardware. The amount of hardware she collected <laughs> eight times. She was Big South Freshman of the Week, Big South Freshman of the Year on top of that, VASID Freshman of the Year. She was just great. I'm just saying, this girl is going to be an absolute monster. The green monster next that year. That makes came more sense. There we go. On the fly. The That's the best one you've ever come <laughs> Thank up with. you. But she's just going to be great. Like, yeah. if she puts the work in this summer, I'm so excited yeah, right I now. I can see that. <laughs> she's just going to wreck people. So yeah. it's going to be fantastic. That was, you should have seen his face yeah. when that, there we that go. nickname hit yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, in Fuego, the top female athlete of the year. Who you got? Amber Bishop. It, she just had such an amazing campaign. One of the top freshmen in just all the nation. Yeah. Not just here at Liberty, the whole nation. She, The team played 70 games this year. She was part of 68 of those. She led the team in runs, hits, home runs, RBI, and slugging percentage. Wow. And my nickname for her would be Huff. What? Hall of Famer okay. in the uh, making. Uh, this girl is going to be, yeah, got this it. girl's going to be unreal. Yeah. And I just think Kelly Strickland, she hit 15 home runs this year as a freshman. Kelly Strickland back in 2011 hit 16 as a junior. And then the record for a whole season at Liberty, Jessica Moore had 21 on the year. I think that's going to be doubt. shattered. Yeah. I think so. Right. Like yeah. I honestly think she could hit 25. Okay, we I shall do. see. Yeah. Rhett, great job of you, the king of nicknames, Rhett McGibbon. Well, still to come, 10 better highlights you will not find. We unveil our picks for the top 10 plays of the entire sports season. You don't want to miss these. Game on coming back right after this. This is Liberty University, the world's largest Christian university. Want to come visit us? Well, you're in luck. Homecoming is a perfect opportunity for alumni, families, and newcomers to participate in the game day experience. At College for a Weekend, you get to hear from speakers, go to classes, and attend our weekend concert. Ring in the new year with us at Winterfest. Spend the day snowboarding at Snowflex, rock climbing, or at the artist Q&A, then rock out at night with the top Christian artists. With so many ways to visit our campus, why aren't you here already? Liberty University. This is no ordinary school. This is more than an education. We're here to equip students. To make an impact. On a global scale. We believe we were created. To make a difference. To serve God. And each other. Wherever we are. Whatever we study. We are. Champions for Christ. We are. We are. We are Liberty University. Welcome back to the show. Well, if you're a loyal viewer, you know that here at Game On, we bring you the top five plays of the month every month. Basically, we feel it's our duty as good citizens to show you the very finest plays that Liberty Athletics has to offer. But today we're taking it to another level. Yeah. With the athletic season in the rearview mirror, we present to you now the ultimate list of highlights. These are the top ten plays from the entire year. Yeah, let's begin at play number ten, shall yeah, we? That's a good place here. March 18th, Liberty Baseball facing high point. DJ Artis, the Big South Player of the Year, showing he can do more than just swing the bat. The fantastic it. catch as he goes banging into the wall. A great catch, and he lives to tell yeah, about Yeah, he's it. got some range out there in center field. Quite the year for DJ. All right, moving on now to play number nine. To the pitch we go. LU Soccer taking on Howard back in August. 
Oh, check out the ball movement. Oh, check out the selfish oh. sprint. This is teamwork making the dream work. I love that and saying. And Tresor Mbuyu will be the benefactor as he punches it in. High fives all around as we get another look at the Flames sharing the wealth and scoring Mbuyu coming through. To softball for play number eight, here's Alan York on the call. The one, two, line to the gap in left center field. Click a oh, diving yes. play. That is out three. Wow. And that is a hashtag SC top 10. Yeah, that actually would make Sports Center. Play number seven now, Liberty Football at Kennesaw State. Frankie Hickson on the return, and Frankie's getting free. After pinballing off of defenders, he would turn on the Jets. Hickson would go 99 yards to pay dirt as he helped Liberty defeat the Owls 36-21. He was one of the better return men in the nation a year ago, one of many explosive plays he made in his freshman campaign. We go from one freshman to another. Brock Gardner throwing down the alley oop. Look at it here, absolute beauty. Gardner proved to be a high flyer in his first season. The hardest part was picking his best dunk. We went with this one, so I'm sorry, you just gonna have to deal with it. That's right, play number five, Liberty and Gardner Webb. Alan York, tell us what's up. So from 36 yards away to tie it, if he misses, Liberty wins. Snap back, ball's blocked! Liberty is gonna win it here in Lynchburg! for the Flames. We saw a dramatic football win. How about the same from softball? Trailing 5-4 in the seventh, an elimination game at that. That's when Tori Savani went deep. She delivered a blast, and her teammates will never forget it. The go-ahead three-run home run. Call her Captain Clutch. That's right. As she helped Liberty to a comeback win and an eventual NISC championship. What a shot. All right, back to basketball for play number three. A.C. Reed, cold-blooded. Georgia to inbound, gets it to A.C. Deep three, pull up. He banked it in. He banked it in. Oh, my goodness. A.C. Reed beats the buzzer and the flames. Stun Radford, the junior at Texas pulling up, letting it fly, and banking it home for the win. Let's go here to play number two, probably the most viewed Liberty highlight of all time. Yeah. Quinn Ryan with a nifty goal. It would make Sports Center here in the States, and in Canada would make TSN's 1v1 Challenge Hall of Fame. Wow. Quinn Ryan does the old Michigan making the Rutgers goaltender look like Kofefe uh, in the process. Yeah, okay. You know Kofefe. I know, I know what you're saying. That's oh, hey, right. <laughs> what a year it has been. So many yeah. great plays, but we still have one better that we haven't shown you yet. Yeah, hard to believe there's one better than what you've seen, but it really wouldn't be a top 10 plays with only nine. So here's yeah. the setup. The number one play of the year, it comes to us from the Big South Women's Soccer Championship match as Liberty faced High Point. Late in the match now, the score tied 1-1. High Point would have a great opportunity. Michelle McKeish denied once, denied twice oh. by Holly Van Nord. She lays out to make the stop. Watch this view. Watch the fans get excited. Oh, yeah, they're going to score. They go, are you kidding me? No, Holly Van Nord denies it. What a play by her. What a career by her. And those are your top 10 Liberty plays of the entire year. We hope you've enjoyed it. We're out of time. Yeah. He's Rhett. I'm Matt. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here at Game On next time.